Welcome back to the series on comic book production from Platform Comics. So what I want to go over in this video is modifying art files. So a lot of times you're working uh, with artists and the files just aren't the right size you need, the right format you need. Maybe you thought you were going to be going with one printer and now you're going with a different one and they have different specifications. So maybe it's not something you could have foreseen. But hopefully you have all the specifications planned out, uh, you know, in the pre-production like we talked about in other videos. And that way you don't have to do any of this stuff. Like everything just fits perfectly. And so I'm going to be doing everything in this video inside of Adobe Photoshop. Like I said before, I will be doing another video where I do all of the same stuff but in free and open source software. But I think the Adobe software works really well and if you do have it, uh, your life is a little bit easier. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a file. This is one of the comic pages I was working with from this comic I mentioned called A Place in the West, which is a, a comic based on Half-Life uh, made by a couple of friends of mine. And it's a really great comic if you like Half-Life. Um, they uh, distribute it through Steam, which I think is pretty cool. I went ahead and messed with this file to make it wrong in every way. So we're going to fix it one piece at a time. Hopefully you're not dealing with this many problems, but just in case we're going to go over all the things I mentioned. Where was that in the intro video? Uh, about the specs, like if uh, all four of these things are wrong, you know, the file type, the color space, the DPI, and the, and the actual size. So I'm just going to drag this into Photoshop. Okay, so it's in Photoshop. So the first thing is it's a JPEG and I want it to be a TIFF file. Now, if I'm converting from a JPEG to TIFF, I'm not gaining any uh, image quality. I want to be clear on that. TIFF files are better for images. You should be working with TIFF files. They visually look better. But once you compress stuff, you can't uncompress. You can't gain the data back. You know, compression is essentially getting rid of information and you can't get that information back. But still, maybe you want to be working in TIFF files. Maybe it's one random JPEG file and it's it's messing with the workflow. If you do convert to TIFFs, then you know that you're not going to be degrading it anymore. Versus if you're using a JPEG, you don't know if it's being compressed uh, any more than it already is. So, you know, you're not necessarily gaining anything, um, but maybe it just makes it easier to work with to be a TIFF. So let's just do that really quick. When you're exporting stuff in uh, Photoshop, usually you go to export, but for TIFFs, you just go to save as. And then right here, you select TIFF file. Uh, you save as a copy. Let's just make it a new file. And we're going to call this step two. And we're going to call it TIFF. That was the point of this step. We'll hit save. And we mentioned LZW compression in a previous video. Essentially, LZW compression helps reduce the size of the file. It doesn't actually remove any of the image quality. So you should pretty much always use LZW compression. It will make the file sizes easier to handle and, you know, doesn't hurt visually. So why not? Okay, so it's saved and you can see here that the file is substantially larger. Um, and remember, we gained nothing. No visual quality was gained from this conversion. But just because of the nature of the TIFF file, it just made it a larger file size. So let's drag that TIFF file into Photoshop. So maybe you didn't get a JPEG, maybe you did get a TIFF file, and everybody in your team has been working with TIFF files, which is great, but this file is in RGB. It's an RGB file. So the easiest way would be you go up here to image and hit mode and then just switch it to CMYK. But as we uh, mentioned in an earlier video, it's not necessarily about being RGB or CMYK. A lot of it has to do with the color profile. So the way you choose the color profile is you go up here to edit and you go to assign profile and you see it's defaulting to this US web coded SWOP V2, which is like the default for Photoshop, I'm pretty sure, for CMYK. So if you just go to profile, uh, like Print Ninja uses this Japan color 2001 coded. So I'll select that one. I'll hit OK. And I don't know if you just noticed that, but the colors actually changed a little bit. So I'm going to toggle back and forth. This was before. This was after before, after. Let me zoom in a little bit. Before, after. You see it's a little darker. So it's never great to change from RGB to CMYK. It's never great to switch between color profiles. The reason is because the way the software is interpreting the colors is going to change, which means that what the artist drew, like what the artist intended it to look like, is going to change slightly. Like it's not a huge difference, as you can tell. But there is a difference from like what the artist was seeing when they drew it. So by making sure that you're in the right uh, color profile from the very beginning, then you know what the artist is seeing will be exactly what you're seeing. What, so you could say, what if I just don't change the profile and I send it to uh, the printer just as is? What's going to happen is they're going to convert it for you. So it's better to know what it's going to look like. I mean, they are going to send you a, a proof, at least a digital proof, that should have the right color profile. So it should kind of show you closer to what the finished product will look like. You can never fully tell exactly what something will look like when it's printed. The goal really should be to make the artist's intentions and the artist's style to be as close to the finished product as possible. 
So cool. So now we're in CMYK. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit a save as, save it as a TIFF, save it as a copy. I'm going to change this to step three. And now we're going to call this the CMYK step. Same thing, LZW compression. And you can see there it is. Now, something else you might have noticed, it went from 5 megabytes to 53, and now it went up to 66.8. So just being in CMYK, it added to the file size. And again, we didn't add anything to the file. We're not adding any new information. This is just the nature of TIFF files and the nature of CMYK files. Okay, so now I'll drag that in here. So now we have the CMYK file, so maybe this is where you're starting. Uh, your art team sends you a, a TIFF file that's in CMYK, it's in the right profile but uh, it's the wrong DPI. I kind of mentioned in a previous video that DPI is sort of irrelevant sometimes depending on the size of the pages. And you know, if you don't want to overcomplicate it, you just want it to be the right DPI. All you do is go here to image and select image size. And here you can see this is the size in inches and here it is in pixels up here. So this, this page was in 450 DPI, which is too big. I mean, it doesn't hurt for the DPI to be too big, but you know, it's just making the file size bigger. Maybe the printer is going to have to convert it for you. So just to keep it clean and organized, let's put it to 300, which is what we want to be working in. So as you can see, the, the width and height stayed exactly the same, but the amount of pixels changed. So I'm going to hit OK. And you notice the image got a little bit smaller because essentially what we're doing was getting rid of pixels. For every inch, we got rid of 150 pixels. So it's still, you know, a very large file. This is at 28% zoom. If I go all the way in, this is the actual size of it. It's, you know, it's still large. So now I'll save that as, uh, this is step four, this is a DPI step. Okay, so now you might notice that the file got uh, substantially smaller. It's about half the size because like I mentioned, we got rid of a lot of pixels. So let me drag this into Photoshop. Now we have a file that's, you know, it's a TIFF file. It's the right uh, CMYK profile. It's the right DPI, and this is actually something that happens a lot, which is it's just the wrong width and height. This might be because you weren't planning ahead, or maybe you planned on using one printer, and then you changed your mind because, I don't know, maybe it's too expensive or something, and so now you have a different printer, and they want different sizes. Most of the printers are going to want 300 DPI, CMYK, so you're not going to have to change that, but you might have to change the width and height. So this file is 11 inches by 17 inches, but let's say we were using this printer that was asking for uh, 7 by 10 and a half inches, and if we were using the larger size for our working size, that would be 11 by 16 and a half, right? So currently we're 11 by 17, so I could just, you know, type in 16.5, and it's just going to squeeze my image a little bit, like that. Uh, that's one way to do it. That's not great. You're altering the artwork. I always try to not alter the artwork in any way. You know, it's not terrible. The quality is not like it gets ruined or anything, but if you can avoid that, I would. So how else can you do it? If you go over here to the crop tool, what you can do is you set it to ratio. And I'm going to type in the size I'm looking for, which is 11 by 16.5. These aren't actual dimensions. It's just a ratio. But it automatically fills it up to the size of the page. So now I can, you know, make this smaller or bigger, and it'll always maintain that ratio. So what I could do now, if I... I make sure delete crop pixels is not on. So if I crop it, it cropped the top and the bottom, but I can still move this down or up and get those pixels back. If I want to save some pixels from the top or save some pixels from the bottom, I can kind of play with it. This is pretty much exactly what we were doing in InDesign in the last video. And this is not a bad way to do it. Like, I think I used the same page in the last video. And because, you know, there's more important artwork up here, maybe I want to kind of save that as much as possible. And... I'll sacrifice stuff on the bottom because it was pretty much just plain black down here, so nothing that interesting. So I can do that. I just hit OK. <clears throat> and now I have my artwork in the right size. If I check the image size, it's 11 by 16 and a half, 300 DPI. I could just save that and we're good to go. So that will work most of the time. I want to talk about a different way to do it, um, which will save like every pixel of the image. You won't actually have to crop anything out because there are some times where that's necessary. So I'm going to go back to the original size just, just to make sure it's 11 by 17 and we want it to be 11 by 16 and a half. So this image is a little too tall. I'm going to go back to my crop tool. I got the 11 by 16 and a half ratio still there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this up. I'm going to hold down the option key to make sure it's symmetrical and I'm going to pull it up and it automatically snaps to the height and then I'm going to hit OK. So now the entirety of the page is in the canvas, but there's this extra space on the left and the right. So again, I could just select the whole thing, hit the transform tool, the edit free transform, and just drag this wide, you know? But now I'm stretching the artwork and yeah, it doesn't look horrible, but 
again, I'm, I don't want to mess with the artist's work. So what I'm going to do is, uh, is I'm going to mess with the artist's work, but I'm going to do it in as less intrusive way as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the selection tool, and I'm going to get uh, close to the edge here. And I'm going to drag all the way down. And then I'm going to uh, switch back to that transform tool, which is Command-T on a Mac, and I'm just going to drag this out. And I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to do the same thing on the left. So now I'm just going to drag that and drag it to the left. Hit OK. OK, so now the entire height of the image is still saved. I'm, I'm not cropping anything out. I'm not losing anything. But what I did do was I stretched the sides. And I did say I don't like to stretch the images and alter the artwork. And I don't like to do that. And I, I would avoid doing it if possible. But sometimes... You know, there's really important artwork near the top and the bottom. Maybe there's lettering that's really close, and you have to remember that there's going to be uh, it's going to get cut by the printer. You know, for the bleed section. So you know, if you have like lettering right up here close to the edge, and you can't really afford to crop it. So maybe you don't have to do this for every page. Maybe you could just do this for like the one or two pages where everything that's happening on the edges is important, and you want to preserve all of it. So I stretched out these sides, and just looking at it, it's pretty unnoticeable. Um, you know, if somebody's reading it, they're not going to be staring at this stuff over here. Um, down here. This is just black background, and this has a little bit of the snow. Nothing noticeable there. Up here, the edge of this building got stretched a tiny bit. You can kind of tell there the angle of the window changed slightly. Um, when you're dealing with diagonal lines, you can see here, too, it, it, it slightly altered the angle of this line. If I undo, you can see how before the line was like that. It messed with it a little bit, but it's pretty unnoticeable. And if it was an emergency situation where I really had to preserve the top and the bottom of the page, this method will work, and I, I have had to do that before because sometimes artists put important stuff near the edge even though they shouldn't. So now the thing to remember is that I kept the height, which was 17, and I stretched the width, which was 11. So this is fine because it's still the proper ratio, so when I shrink it down to the printing size, it should all fit perfectly. But if I really want to, I can hit this uh, link button to keep this linked, and I'll just hit 11, and you'll see the height automatically changed to 16 and a half, which was what we wanted. So I can just hit OK. And now my image is 11 and 16 and a half, 300 DPI, it's CMYK, all that stuff. So I'm going to save this as step five, which was the crop phase. Save it as a new copy, embed the Japan color, LZW compression. And there we go, because we actually ended up cropping a little bit, the size got a little bit smaller, tiny bit. So these are the problems that I think most people encounter. Um, with comic books, it, the wrong file types, the wrong color, the wrong DPI, the wrong uh, image size. I think the image size one is the most common. A lot of times an art team will just start making it in whatever size they want and nobody really pays attention to it. And then it comes time to print and the printer's like, oh, we want it to be this size. And now you have to make it work. So hopefully a few of those tricks I showed you can help you out. So last thing I wanted to show, another version where what if your page is too wide? The last page was too tall, this one's too wide. So if I go to the image settings... You see it's 11 by 16, and I want it to be 11 by 16 and a half. So again, I can just go to that, the crop tool, and it has my ratio in there from before. It's automatically sized to the right height, and it's cropping off a little bit of the right and the left. I could just hit OK, right? And then I have a little bit extra on the right and the left to play with. I can kind of decide if I want to keep more of the left or the right. And again, this is pretty much what we were doing in InDesign as well. But what if we want to save every single pixel? Again, maybe the stuff on the left and the right is really important, and we don't want to crop it out. We go back to this crop tool, essentially doing the same thing I did with the image that was too tall. So now, because this one is too wide, we have a little bit of a gap on the top and the bottom. So again, I could just grab the whole thing, stretch it, but now I'm stretching a lot of the artwork. I chose this page specifically because there's really nothing at all happening in, in, in the borders that's interesting. So it's just plain black and this plain purple. You could even get the paint bucket tool, uh, select the eyedropper, select that black, and then just drop it in there. And look, that's pretty seamless. A lot of the times the border of a comic is just plain white or plain black. I've even used the brush tool to just like select a nearby color and literally just like brush it in manually. I could do the same thing down here with this purple, just drop paint bucket. Uh, I can see a little bit of a line here, so it's not perfect. So I don't usually like to use the paint bucket tool. So let me try it the way I did the previous image. I'm gonna do the same thing highlight this whole section, hit transform, drag it up, do it down here, 
hit transform, drag it down, and there we go. Like, nothing that's important was altered in any way. All I did was extend the background. And like I said, a lot of comics, they just have a white border, and you can just extend the white border, and that way you don't actually have to crop anything out. You don't have to crop anything from the left and the right. So you can save that, and now you got the, the right size. So that's pretty much all the problems I think you'll ever encounter uh, with art files and the different ways to get them to uh, match up with the specs that you need them to be. So I hope it's useful. In the next video, I'll talk about how to do all the stuff I just described, but with free software for those of you who don't have uh, Photoshop or InDesign. All right, thanks for watching.